to episode 22 of The Closest They Came, a series where we take a look back on the days when drivers, winless at NASCAR's highest level, came painfully close to etching their names into the history books. Today we'll be looking back at David Gilliland's race in the 2008 Toyota Save Mart 350. David Gilliland would become a second-generation race car driver, following in the footsteps of his father, former Winston West Series champion Butch Gilliland. David would find his first on-track success at Southern California's Paris Auto Speedway in the late 90s, where he still holds the track record in the stock car division as of the recording of this video. His first success among the NASCAR ranks would come in the NASCAR Southwest Series, earning nine wins between 2002 and 2005 and winning the Most Popular Driver Award in 2004. Concurrently making starts in the NASCAR Winston West, later Grand National West Series, he would claim his first victory and Rookie of the Year honors in 2004. 2005 would bring an additional victory and his second consecutive top four points finish in the series. David, congratulations. The first checkered flag of the season. Does it get any better? No, it don't, man. We came out here with a pole and a, and a victory. What a way to start the new season, man. We're really excited. Uh, Racecarfans.com, The Body Shop, uh, Honda Cars of Corona, Mannheim's Auto Auctions, um, Ropolis Racing Engines, man. They just gave me an awesome car today and uh, couldn't ask for, to drive for a better team. Later that year, he would earn broader national attention, claiming the victory at the Toyota All-Star Showdown following the disqualification of original winner Mike Olson. After earning the opportunity to make limited Bush Grand National Series starts in the Clay Andrews Racing No. 84 in 2006, he would be catapulted into the national spotlight after earning an improbable win for the small underfunded team at Kentucky Speedway in June. You had tears in your eyes, buddy, when I reached in there to congratulate you. What are you feeling right now? Unbelievable, man. I just got to thank my... Uh... My crew, my car owner, Clay Andrews, you know, we're racing unsponsored. We're building our own motors. We're, we're up against it, you know what I mean? And uh, they've asked me for the last three months, what do you think about racing with these cup guys? And I said, I love it because it's going to make me better. And tonight, it made me better, and uh, we're here. We're in victory lane. I can't believe it. It's a dream come true. I've waited my whole life for this. Um, it's been an opportunity of a lifetime to try and run the Bush Series, and we're just uh, hopefully we can keep on going from here. You're sitting here. This perhaps is the biggest upset in Bush Series racing history. What do you think of that? Uh, awesome. I'm happy to be a part of it. You know what I mean? Like I said, we're, we're unsponsored, building our own motors, and uh, just an awesome opportunity, man. Clay Andrews and, and all the guys, you know, we missed Charlotte last race, and we were running a, a partial schedule, and told me it just wasn't right, you know? And, and we came here, and we unloaded, and lap five, I told the guys, it's perfect. And uh, pretty excited about being able to feel that also, you know, and, and knowing the car's good, and, and uh, it's just... It, it's kind of a slow process for us. We didn't get started. We moved into our shop January 15th. Uh, we got three cars that are done right now. We're just, we've been behind, you know, and, and uh, awesome. This is gonna speed us up. Following Elliott Sadler's departure from the Robert Yates Racing 38 team in mid-August, Gilliland was tapped to drive the car for the final 14 races of the season. He performed well enough to earn the seat full-time for the 2007 season. By the time teams pulled into Sonoma, California in June of 2008 to the then-titled Infineon Raceway, Gilliland had made 66 starts in the Cup Series, having earned one top five and three top ten finishes. He would line up 31st after averaging 90.792 miles per hour around the 11-turn road course in qualifying. And we're racing at Sonoma. The team, led by crew chief Cully Baraclaw, would employ a two-pit stop strategy in an attempt to make up track position, calling Gilliland to pit road on lap 24 of the scheduled 110-lap event, with hopes of making it to around lap 66 on fuel before making his final stop. Gilliland would lose a lap in the process, however his fresh tires would allow him to get back by leader Jimmy Johnson on lap 27. David Reagan would get into the tire stacks and turn 11 on lap 30, putting them into the racing groove and bringing out the event's first caution. The remaining lead lap cars that had not yet made their first stop would come in during the yellow, allowing Gilliland to gain significant track position. He would restart from 7th on lap 32, quickly gaining a spot after some calamity for leader Greg Biffle in turn 2. He would enter the top 5 for the first time on lap 35. David Gilliland in the uh, 38 car started 31st. And he 
He came from the Winston West Series, what was then the West right. Series. Uh, so he's run some races here, probably more or as many as some of these cup guys have. But Cully Bearclaw, his crew chief, brought him to pit road at lap 24. So what this group is doing, they are looking at running 43 laps per segment. I think if we stay green, this is the first race car you'll see hit pit road at lap 67. But again, they're going to have to run 43 laps per segment, uh, which could be a straight. Oh, by the way, he's been to Victory Lane here as his dad's crew chief in the West Series. That's right. We have him pitting on lap 24 up here. Lindsay? Well, Larry was just talking about David Gilliland, and I, I was able to talk to him after final practice yesterday, and he was just beaming from ear to ear. He was third on board for that practice, and they had made changes looking for grip, so those are the same kind of things that they're going with here today. And David, like Larry said, you know, loves being back in this track, and he had won here as the crew chief on his dad's team, so he really feels like no matter, you know, how that confused, that does give him a little bit extra help here at Sonoma. And behind him, Gilliland in the number 38 car. We talked before about how pleased he is to be back at this hometown track for him. Gilliland saying the car's a little bit tight, turning in the right-handers. Gilliland would make his second and final pit stop at the tail end of lap 66. David Gilliland also pitted about a lap and a half ago from a top 10 position. Robbie Gordon would stall on the track after an incident with Kurt Busch and Max Pappas, bringing out the second caution on lap 70. Having already pitted, this would work out for Gilliland, allowing him to retain track position. He would restart from fifth on lap 75. The third caution would come out later that lap for an incident involving Marcos Ambros and Juan Pablo Montoya in turn 11. Restarting from fifth once again on lap 78, Gilliland would quickly get around Tony Stewart for fourth. Jamie got a really Ooh, good that, start. Yeah, that, uh, well, yeah, and, and I think he went out to, to, to the block outside. on the 26 car, and that kind of cost him a little bit. That's a good move on Jamie because Jamie was up on it. Now you see Tony. That. Tony just drops his left side off the off the racetrack, has to check up, and the 38 gets around him. Good move by Gillum. Later passing Ambrose for third on lap 80. On board with Tony. He's looking up there at Gillum right there at 38. Gonna take a look at Ambrose, and he's got a really good run. Oh, oh right in front of him. Contact. Too. That was big. I don't think Marcus yeah. thought he was there. That was a good move by Gilliland, though, man. I'm going to tell you. That was a power move. And he's got the line right here. 38 car. Yeah. Been running very good today. Running good times. They've, they've been lucky, like a lot of these cars have been, when the cautions come out. So they've been on the right sequence. Lindsay. Bill, and you guys are right. And you know what? They say they are good to go on fuel. The 38 of David Gilliland, they pitted last on lap 66. That means they got about 44 laps of fuel to go. David feels like the car's in great condition right now. This is the car that they obviously tested with. They went to Road Atlanta, and ever since they got back from that test, David's been really pleased. Runs third, his best career finish, uh, finish, rather, fourth at Talladega in April of last year. What a lift that's going to be for those guys. It, it would be huge <laughs> for those guys. You know, I think Doug and those guys have worked really hard. Doug Yates. Doug Yates have worked really hard on, on that 28 and that 38 with, with Travis. And it seems like every week they get one to run good and then the next one runs good. But, um, you know, like we said, David's been out here. He's been out here with his father. He's been out here as a crew chief. He's been out here and run run the, the tour out here and stuff. So he knows this racetrack. And look, you know, when you go home and you're able to run in front of some of your friends and family too, yes. that, that gives you a little bit of boost. So it's really, really nice because he's a good guy. It's really nice to see somebody like him having a good run today. Stewart would make his way back around on lap 97, dropping Gill into fourth. David Rudiman would nose it into the tire barriers in turn nine following a tire failure on lap 102, bringing out the fourth yellow. The leaders would stay out when the pits open, keeping Gilliland in fourth for when the race resumed once again on lap 105. Making his way to second after Kevin Harvick triggered a pileup as the field made its way into turn seven, bringing out the fifth caution. And look who's second right now. Look who's second. Look who's third, too. Right. That, that's what's killing me. We, but we, we've heard Jeff complain, but the 38 car of David Gilliland has put himself in a great position. He was just in the right place. He was the car that was being passed by the 29 when right. the accident happened. 32 years old in his 67th Sprint Cup Series race. Having already made their beds, the leaders stayed on track once more during the caution. The race would resume on lap 108. Hang on for turn two. Jeff got a restart yeah. like he smelled blood in the water, man. Yeah, but he just couldn't go anywhere. Yeah. 
The only one that got through there, good, man. Oh, they're jammed up back there. That's somebody spinning off to the side there. Oh. The caution would come out for the sixth time shortly afterwards, following a jam up in turn two that caused significant damage to Scott Pruitt's car. The excessive fluid left around the racing surface by Pruitt's wounded machine would require a lengthy cleanup, bringing out a red flag and sending the race into overtime for an attempt at a green-white checkered finish. And I'm sitting here with Kelly Barracloud, David Gilliland's crew chief. Do you guys have enough there in the tank to keep it going? Yeah, we, we're good on fuel, good to go. The freecreditreport.com car with David driving, everybody, the whole team's done a great job. We're pretty excited about where we're at. We just want to finish it out and see what we can do. As a crew chief, what are your emotions right now knowing that David has a chance to get his best finish of the season? Uh, I'm st I've seen David do this before, so he's very good road course racer. Everybody can see that now, so uh, I'm just going to sit back like everybody else and watch it. The race would restart for the final time on lap 111. Hang on, buddy. But you're about to get run over. Hang on, man. <laughs> Gillen would ultimately cross the line in second, 1.716 seconds behind Kyle Busch, who would claim his fifth victory of the season and the ninth of his career. A great run for David Gillen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jeff. About David Gill, and he just looked at me and said, "Yeah, I told you we were good. That's what you told me after final practice. How great is this for you to get that second place finish, the best of your career?" Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, it means a lot to me, you know, for my career. But but Yates Racing too, man. I'm so proud of Yates Racing, what we've been able to do in a year. You know what I mean? Or half a year actually, from where we were last year to now. It's just uh, it's incredible. So I'm real proud of the team. Uh, FreeCreditReport.com stuck behind us, uh, you know, with my Bush deal last year and just stepped up and and sponsored our deal to help us get through here so uh it's it's been awesome you know it just uh just all the support from everybody ford drive one uh you gotta tell everybody out there to go and, and drive a ford it's uh it was awesome. It was awesome for me today. It's it, it's incredible, man. I'm so happy. This track, we've had so much success here as a family. My dad's won races here. I won the West race last year, and, and uh, I've won a Southwest Tour race, but, but this tops them all right here. So uh, we're close. That's, uh, like you said, my career best finish. I'm just so happy and proud of all the guys. Coley Barraclaw, my crew chief, and just everybody, man, that's stuck behind me up until at this point. David Gilliland, proud of that second place finish here at Infineon. Gilliland would compete full-time in the Cup Series through 2015 making his final start to date in 2018, earning four more top tens and two additional top fives in that span, including an honorable mention for the 2013 Aaron's 499 from Talladega, where he would push teammate David Reagan to the victory. Gillen ventured into team ownership in 2018, having since claimed race victories in both the Arkham Menard Series and the Camping World Truck Series during the team's first few seasons of competition, all the while supporting his son Todd Gillen's progression into the Cup Series. David Gillen has achieved success throughout the NASCAR ranks as both a driver and a car owner, earning a legendary status especially throughout racing circles in the Southwest. And on one hot summer day in June of 2008, he nearly took home the victory at NASCAR's highest level.